How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we got a new movie from Walmart. This just came out for us uh, direct to video at Walmart. Dark Whispers Volume 1 and yes it does say Volume 1 in the cover. Pretty gutsy of them to put a 1 in their title. Uh, kind of basically saying yeah we're gonna get a sequel and hey if you get a sequel uh, I'll watch it. But yeah it's pretty rare that you see a movie go this is part 1. And hey, so I guess they're uh, I guess they're counting on that sequel there. Uh, this is from 2019. Now it obviously took a while to get over here to us because this in the direct-to-video circuit just came out more or less a week ago uh, in 2021. So 2019 to 2021 uh, took a bit for it to get over here. Uh, this is an anthology horror movie uh, directed by Eleven female Australian horror filmmakers. So we get 11 women making this movie. Uh, the person who created this, Megan Riacos, she also directed the uh, host section, the, uh, the tie-in narrative. She directed that and then you get the other 10 women uh, coming in and doing their individual stories. You know, they're all uh, unrelated anthology horror stories, but uh, this movie is 105 minutes long, so take out the host segments, divide it up. Uh, each short is only about 10 minutes long, so we're, we're looking at pretty short shorts here. Um, a lot of anthology horror is three to five sections, so this is quite a bit more. Off the top of my head, the only anthology horror that did more shorts would be the uh, ABCs of Death movie, so this is... a uh, Quite a, quite a bit we got going on in here. Uh, this movie stars Anthony uh, La Plagia, uh, Ed Spellers, Andrea Dematres, and Asher Ketty, along with a, a much bigger cast. Obviously, uh, you're dealing with ten segments. You're going to have quite a large cast in this. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a little bit of look at the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want uh, to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this movie's about. Um, we open up with uh, the connective narrative piece, the uh, the host segment, and you get this woman. She Her mother has died, and she's packing up her mom's house. And while she's doing that, she finds a book with a note to her in it. The note says, this was your grandmother's book, she died and gave it to me, now I'm giving this book to you. And the book is full of scary stories, and she starts to read some, and they get too spooky, and she starts to try to put it down, but things in her real world start to pop up and make her scared, and she realizes she has to finish the book, otherwise, you know, crazy, dark things will happen. And then we get the uh, the ten stories, which I'll try to um, go over pretty quick because we do got a lot of them. Uh, we got Baby Girl, which is about a woman who is wanting to ride on this elevator alone. She seems upset, and we don't really know what's going on there, but she'll get a mysterious visitor when she does step on the elevator. So a cool, creepy story there. Uh, up next... The Man Who Caught a Mermaid. You get this lonely guy who's in an unhappy marriage with his wife. Uh, he every day goes out fishing at a pier trying to catch a mermaid, and he's kind of a laughing stock. But one day he does catch one, and he brings it home and hides it in his shed from the world. This is a, a lot of people's favorite one. Uh, personally, the humor, I just it didn't click with me. This is... Uh, one of those stories that leans heavily into humor. You get this guy who's kind of a clumsy uh, dork. Um, but the costume for the mermaid is pretty cool. It's one of the most memorable parts of the movie. Um, and then you do get the metaphor. You know, mermaids were always a metaphor for, you know, a bunch of guys stranded at sea and seeing women in the water. And here, instead of stranding at sea, it's a guy who is stuck in a a marriage that he doesn't uh, particularly feel the passion for anymore and that's driven him to look for a mermaid in the ocean so it does have kind of a, a strong metaphor there good metaphor good creature I just I didn't click with the humor but if you do you'll really like this one 
Um, up next, Gloomy Valentine. This is kind of a, a Tim Burton-styled animation. It's about a girl who her lover is gone. I'm not sure if he's dead or if he just left her. It's told in a very abstract and surrealist way. Um, Tim Burton fans, you'll probably like a lot of the visuals here, uh, but it is very abstract and not everybody's going to click with this. This is going to be one of those stories that some people leave going, what was that thing about? But overall, cool animation. Good to change things up. Always a big fan of that. Um, up next, Watch Me. This is about a celebrity who wants to be viewed. She wants people watching her 24 hours a day because she's afraid of being alone. So a really interesting concept, a commentary on celebrity culture and people wanting, you know, praise and acknowledgement for their existence. A good concept doesn't go super far with it. It's one of those that wraps up really quick and you're like, oh, that was interesting, but it's over, I guess. Um, interesting enough concept, though. Um, up next, story time. You get a, a small village and they start to tell stories about how there's this uh, sort of mythical creature, an old woman that lives in the woods that snatches up kids and then a young girl and her brother go to the woods to look for the old woman. Uh, cool enough story. Um, you get lots of really good dark visuals of this woods, you know, and it's a, a cool uh, fairy tale-esque thing. Um, up next, the ride. You get a hitchhiker, gets in a car with a guy, and they accidentally run someone over, and the guy decides he wants to just bury the person and forget all about it. And this also does have a pretty cool twist uh, near the end. So overall, a pretty good classic hitchhiker type story. I, I like the ride pretty well. Um, up next, White's, uh, White Song. This is based off Indonesian folklore, and actually the whole thing is uh, with uh, foreign language and subtitles, so again, kind of uh, shaking this up. Uh, uh, this is about the ghost of a lady who died, and this lady, she had felt uh, really bad things in the man's world. I think she uh, died in childbirth or something, and she is trying to pull other women to their death to relieve them of their misery. So a pretty cool foreign ghost movie. Some some creepy moments there. Uh, up next is Grills with a, a Z. You get this woman on a dating site and she's luring in men and then one day she meets a really creepy dentist and she has a special plan for him. This is also uh, filmed in black and white so again shaking things up. Although that being said uh, when I went back, uh, I watched the movie one day, and then I went back to write the review the day after, you know, let my head process a lot of it. This is one that I really didn't remember much of, and I had to, you know, scroll through it again and be like, what was this story about? So, kind of forgettable, but I do like the ideas in here, and it, it did lead to something interesting, but just kind of forgettable there. Um, the last two, though, are my personal favorites. Little Share House of Horrors, so obviously like Little Shop of Horrors, but with Share House, which I guess is an Australian thing where, like, if you live in a house with roommates or something. Anyway, this girl goes to a shop, the shop owner's kind of rude, and she steals a mysterious rare plant from the shop. She starts making a smoothie out of it when she gets home, and her, uh, her roommates think it'd be super funny to drink the smoothie when she's not looking and of course plant-based horror is unleashed and she has to to fight her way out of that situation. Really do love the crazy kinetic energy. This is the closest thing in here to an 80s horror movie and one of my favorites here. Um, the last one, The Intruder. This woman is alone in her house when she begins to think her ex is stalking her outside the house and she feels like she's in danger, like she might get killed, when suddenly, out of, a blue, out of the blue, one of her old friends stops by, and they have a conversation about why things ended poorly between them. And this is a really cool story. Lots of thunder and lightning. A really classic horror uh, story with some cool plot elements at the end. 
just where this story goes, I really did like it with some really cool and interesting reveals. I, out of the, all the stories, narratively, this has to be the best one, plus the atmosphere of the thunder and lightning. I really did like it. Like I said, uh, Little Share House of Horrors and The Intruder are my personal favorites of the bunch. Uh, but let's uh, analyze the elements overall now. Uh, the connection, uh, you talk about um, it's this lady with a book and she reads the stories. Things from the story start to haunt her. I, I like the connection device pretty well, but I wish they had pushed it farther. Like, I wish there was more of a climax in the connection piece when than there is. And I wish we got to see a lot more horrifying stuff in this house, you know? The connection pieces are good. They obviously didn't have enough time with them because this movie's already pretty long. But I would have loved to see the connection piece fleshed out more and find out, you know, more about what's happening at our house and have some good moments there. So it's good for what it is. I just wish it was built up more. Um, the other connecting theme, uh, this is obviously 11 female directors. The themes of, you know, feminism, not really in your face, you know. They're all female directors, and most of them do have somewhat of a female theme, but it's pretty loose. It's more just, hey, do whatever you want. Uh, but the female theme, you know, a lot of them have female protagonist or a female monster. Uh, you do get themes, you know, like the mermaid one, where it's about a guy not feeling passion for his wife anymore and looking out into the seas. You do get ones with themes of the same motherhood and something like that. Uh, not super big on theme. It's there, but it's not what the movie's focusing on. So if you're looking for that, it's not super important. They really just let the directors do whatever. In fact, uh, one, The Ride, doesn't really have too much of anything of this. I mean, there's a female character at the very end, but yeah, it doesn't really focus on the theming. So if you wanted a theme for this movie, if you wanted a strong theme like that, there's not really a connecting theme. But if you didn't really want a connecting theme and you just want to see the directors go crazy and do whatever, uh, that's what this story chose to do. Now, as far as the uh, the individual stories go, this is uh, what you're all here for, uh, ten stories, four of them are fine, you know, some that you look at and you're like, oh, okay, it's good enough. Um, sometimes you're like, what was that all about? You know, and there are four of those that are like that. There are four more that are pretty good, not the, the best thing ever, but you watch them and you're like, okay, that's fine, that's an interesting idea. Uh, so, four fine, four good, and then two that are very good. The last two in this uh, anthology, I really did like. I'd like more like that. But at the same time, there's no excellent or fantastic ones. There's no amazing right home about them ones. But the two at the end were pretty good and probably worth watching for that. But not the best thing ever. And I think part of that is a lot of these I'd classify as dark fiction but they very seldom go into terror, you know. Like, I expect, you know, I want to see big, crazy monsters, which we get a little bit of, but not that much. I'd expect chase scenes, but I, looking back, I don't know if there's even one chase scene in this entire movie. I expect dark survival elements, and there's not too much of that. You know, I really want tension, I want monsters, I want blood and guts everywhere, and... There's a little of that, but not a lot. Like I said, a lot of these are more dark fiction than horror. And, you know, me being an 80s horror geek, I was really hoping for some crazy stuff, which is why when we get to a little share house of horrors, you know, you get kind of a, a plant monster. And I'm like, I, I like this. This is cool. You know, it's what I've been waiting for the whole movie. But yeah, a lot of them are dark fiction, not as deep and terrifying, you know, and... Yeah, in turn, I just wish it had pushed it more. And in turn, looking back at the anthology, all the stories had an interesting idea. You know, a lot of ideas that I hadn't seen anything really like them before. If I had, they had been repurposed in a new way. The ideas and the concepts were all new and interesting. And it's like, okay, I hadn't thought of it like that. Or what if we took, like, say, the mermaid legend and repurposed it to a suburban household, you know? 
So they were all good ideas, I just wish they had been pushed farther and darker and more horrific than they were. And maybe if we had done, say, six stories tops, then we could have fleshed out the ideas better and really push them to make them dark and scary. That's what I would have wanted to see. And turn, they're fine, and it's a cool collection of ideas, but because they are so short and they don't really go for the, you know, go over the top, that's what I would want to see, and it's not necessarily here, but it's still fine. I don't want to dish on this movie too much. If you watch uh, shorts, there are, especially because of YouTube, there's more of an access to short films, you know, and you can find all over YouTube channels that have short horror films and... You know, 10 minutes is about the length you get with a YouTube short. And if you look at channels like, say, Alter is probably the biggest one when you talk about a short horror on YouTube, it's about as good as the ones there, you know? And it's fine, you know, for 10-minute shorts, it's good. It's just nothing that blew me away too much. Uh, two that I really did like, but a bunch of stuff that was just okay. But I don't want to dish on it too hard because it is good enough. It's just... I really, I want extreme stuff, and a lot of these were just dark fiction, you know? Uh, but anyway, maybe I'm rambling too much. It's okay, not the best thing ever, but for ten bucks, it's fine. Um, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, uh, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You are really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you want to see more of my reviews, you can find them there. Anyway, um, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom, probably my anthology movies playlist. Anyway, have a good day now.